question of uh, Yahweh Shai, how he, how he looks like, that he's not a so-called Edomite, and not a so-called Edomite, an Edomite, a so-called white man that is, has long hair and blue eyes. So we, we came across that, and then we started like, hey, wait a second. Or I started like that, and then you have Deuteronomy 28. Like, okay, that's, wow, that's speaking about us. Okay, so that's what we shouldn't do. So what should we do? So you go into the, the law, statutes and commandments, because you want to prove yourself during your life. You want to do, you, you're in that search for a higher power, right? So you start uh, looking for the scriptures, you see the scriptures, and then you read the scriptures, and the scriptures say uh, the duty of men is to keep the law, statutes and commandments. So what are you going to do? You're not going to do that. You, you just believe in a higher power, but you don't want to keep the law, statutes to the best of your abilities. That's how a man of the Lord is uh, being woken up, you know. He, he goes into the law, statutes and commandments, and that's going to be uh, life unto him. That's going to prolong your life. That's going to uh, bring fruits. But, but the, the, the forefathers, our forefathers, they forsook the, the ways and the law, statutes and commandments of the Most High. So what did they do? They went to worship other gods, as it says in the book of four. You know, and because of that, then we came into this place that we're right now. You know, that Esau took our, our, our name and our heritage and they, they made us low to the ground, you know, make us think that we are uh, niggas and spigs and wetbacks, you know. But they know that the greatness, the greatness that is in us, so they had to break us, you know. They wanted to separate us from our, our true power. And if you, as a man of the Lord, you, you come back into this knowledge, then you're gonna feel sorry for the, the, the things that you did before. You're like, oh, I, I shouldn't be able, or I shouldn't eat shrimp, I shouldn't eat pork, I shouldn't do this, I shouldn't smoke. You know, you're gonna be sorrowful. And then you're gonna to try to keep the law, statutes, and commandments. And that's how it starts. That, that's what repentance is, to really feel sorry, to real, really feel remorse. You can't teach somebody to, to repent. You gotta, it has to come from within. You have to feel that for yourself. You know, because these Christians, they all always say, yeah, you got to repent. I hope you repent, this and that. But they don't know the, know the true meaning of the word. Because they say you got to repent, but still they go eat a ham sandwich on Christmas, you know, which, which is a double abomination. You know, because we are not supposed to celebrate Christmas, as it says in the book of Jeremiah, was it 10 and 2. And uh, you're not supposed to eat pork. You know, so as a man of the Lord, you're, you're going to analyze yourself, examine yourself, and then you're going to grow in, in the spirit. Yara, it's up. I have the word repent for you. No. This is in the uh, etymology, which is the, basically the study of words. It says, to feel such regret for sins or crimes as produces amendment of life. Regret. Yeah. yeah see, so it's yeah. regret, it's be sorrowful. So you, yeah, it has to come from, from you have you can't teach somebody to repent. You can't show them the, the ways of the most high and if he repents, then he's gonna keep it. I have a script that you just paraphrased and I found it. How much of the much of the This is uh Lamentations, chapter five for seven. Our fathers have sinned and are not. And we have borne their iniquities. Yeah, yeah. That's uh, because that's that's what happened. Our forefathers they they did wickedness, and we are bearing the fruits thereof. And through the Spirit, we are also um, a seed of our fathers. Where we're our fathers, but we are Yaratazah, the ones that have been doing the works and have been following Yahweh Shai. You know, in the reincarnation. But the forefathers also are the, the, the wicked Israelites because as the scripture says in, uh, in my people there are wicked men you know, and these wicked men they they caused uh, the nation of uh, Israel to be destroyed as it says also in the book of uh, Lamentations we'll read that because of our forefathers this is what happened the Most High turned uh, his back against us he took away everything. He took the tabernacle. He took the, the, the sacrifices. He took everything. This is Lamentations chapter 2 verse 5. The Lord Jehovah was as an enemy. He had swallowed up Israel. He had swallowed, swallowed up our palaces. 
He has destroyed his strongholds and the decrees in the daughter of Judah, warning a lamentation. See, so the Most High did this. Because if we were with our power, if we were with the Most High, nothing could happen to us. But because we were uh, uh, rebellious, we didn't uh, follow the law, statutes, and commandments, then he, become our, he became our enemy. He took away all the palaces, he took away all our greatness. Yeah, man, it goes on and on, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Would you read it? Yeah. Verse 6, he had violently taken away his tabernacle as if it were of a garden. He had destroyed his places of the, uh, I think it says assembly, but of his assembly, the Lord Jehovah has caused a solemn feast and Sabbath to be forgotten in Zion and has despised in the indignation of his anger the king and his priest. See, so you should... We were angry against uh, the so-called white man, Esau Edom, but it's the Most High did this because he okay. uses men as a sword. He uses men to, you know, uh, as, as a as a chessboard. And Esau is his is his, uh, his pawn right now that he's using to to teach us certain things. He's teaching us wickedness, wickedness in its purest form. He took the base of men, bases of men, and put it uh, above us and. This is what happens. You know, everything is upside down. You know, he comes with that uh, the rainbow, the rainbow, which is one of the, the most highest covenants with us. Then it's not going to flood the earth. He takes that and makes it into something that is most hated by the most high. Because what do they use in, in the, what term do they use for, for that? Pride. And uh, pride is, is, uh, is enmity with the most high. You know, the most high hates pride. So that's how you can see that these people are upside down. They, they proclaim the Bible, they, um, uh, they swear upon the Bible, which you're not able, even able to do. You're not supposed to do that. The scripture speaks about that. But they take it and they do it anyway. That's also upside down. Everything that they do is upside down. The spirit that is in, lifted up in them, which is lifted up. What is lifted up? The pride is lifted up. And the spirit that is in them, that is not upright. It's upside down. Get Zechariah, no, Zechariah, Zechariah, because that speaks about the assembly. That's where I got that scripture from. I believe Zechariah three. Yeah, Zechariah three and eighteen. And that's all because of the word repentance. I'm like, hey, wait a second, repentance. Huh? This is Zephaniah. Turn the light on. Yeah, I think this is going to turn on it. This is Zephaniah chapter 3, verse 18. I will gather them that are sorrowful for the solemn assembly. That's what we spoke about, this, uh, being sorrowful. Sorrowful goes into repentance for the solemn assembly. What happened to the solemn assembly? What we read in uh, Lamentations to the solemn assembly was, was taken away, was, uh, yeah, was violently taken away by the Most High. So we the spirit are repenting for that because now we, we have to bear the fruits we have to uh, keep keep the sabbaths uh, to the best of our abilities we got to um, prophesy the word like this you know but that, that's that's all prophecy man that's all had to come to fruition through the spirit of Yahweh Shem um, I will gather them that are sorrowful for the solemn assembly who are of thee to whom the reproach of it was a burden. God, and if you go into that word burden, that means a sign. Because I was like, oh, burden, it's not, a, it's not heavy for you. But if you go into that word burden, it goes into a sign. So if you if you see those things, what happened to our forefathers, and what are happening to us right now, it's gonna be a sign to you that, oh, these are the men of the Lord. We are the men of the Lord, you know? Verse 19, Behold, at that time I will undo all that afflict thee. Uh, if you go into, what was it, 2 Thessalonians, where it speaks about um, yeah, the one that, that, uh, that afflict thee, that he's going to bring it upon that one. Yeah, yeah, that's it. So it's a, it's a righteous thing to recompense. Yeah. 
This is 2 Thessalonians chapter 1 verse 6. Seeing it is a righteous thing, the Most High, to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you. Yeah, so if you go into that word trouble, it's like uh, the same as afflict. So they afflict us, and it's a righteous thing in the Most High's eye to, to recompense, which means to, to balance out. You're gonna, the Most High is going to balance out what Esau did to us, starting with Esau, because it's all these nations, but Esau is going to get the, the heaviest because he's the most wicked. And I will save her that halted, and gather her that was driven out, and I will get their praise and fame in every land where they have been put to shame. Her. And I will save her that halted, and gather her that was driven out. What does the scripture say? The scripture in Jeremiah 6 and 2 says that Israel is likened unto a comely woman. You know, so he's going to save her. He's going to save Israel from all that afflict him, uh, afflict her. Verse, uh, verse 20, at that time will I bring you again, even in the time that I gather you. Um, in uh, verse 19 it also says, I will give them praise. We, we already spoke about that in uh, uh, Hosea, you know, in the place that they were called uh, Loami, which is not my people. That's where they're going to get praise and fame. That's what the scripture says. I will get them praise and fame in every land where they have been put to shame. Haven't we been, been put to shame here in Holland? Haven't we been put to shame in uh, America? And all these countries that we dwell? We are the lowest of the low. That's what they, they see us as. But in those countries, we're going to be put uh, in praise and in fame. Go. Verse 20. At that time will I bring you again, even in the time that I gather you. I will make you a name and a praise among all the people of the earth. When I turn back your captivity before your eyes, said the Lord, I will pass on your shine. He's going to turn back our captivity, meaning to undo. He's going to put it uh, straight again. You know, we're we're in, in captivity right now. We're in Esau's captivity. Former state. Yeah, yeah. So so we're going to go into that former state again. We're going to be back into our uh, right state of mind, and we're going to be put above all these people, as it says in the book uh, that we just read in Zephaniah. So that they, these are things that also have come. Should, uh, are going to come to pass, but that's going to be in the kingdom. That's going to be uh, in the time of Jacob's trouble. You know, people are going to see the men of the Lord that they are not going to be um, consumed by Esau or by certain things. You know, you should have that faith. What we also spoke about. So this should be an end goal. The kingdom should be an end goal. God, but we were actually going to start with Isaiah 55, and we started with the repentance. Yeah. Uh, I was, uh, yeah. well, I was thinking about Ezekiel where it says, I want to the last one. We got it in Jeremiah 30, 31 and 31. Jeremiah 30, 31. Yeah, you want me to grab it? Yeah. Okay. Verse 1. Just bears upon you on the to yeah, to to read it. The righteous thing, you know, being put back in a former state. Uh, and as it says in uh, Wisdom of Solomon, righteousness is, uh, is eternal, it's everlasting. It's immortal. So we are going to be immortal also because we are seeking righteousness right now. But in these chains of darkness, you know, we, you slip and stumble, you fall, you, you can't uh, be all righteous. Yes. Oh, this is Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 31. Behold, the days come, said the Lord Jehovah, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they break, although I was a husband unto them, said the Lord Jehovah. But this covenant, uh, but this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, said the Lord Jehovah by Hashem Yahweh Shai. I will put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts, and I will be their power they shall be my people. See, so that's how we're going to be all righteous and that's when you're going to be immortal because you're going to have all the secrets of the Most High in your, in your head, in your mind. And you're not going to be able to go off because as it says, we're going to have that covenant in us. We're going to have the last and second commandments in us. You know, but now we can't keep the law because that, that seed of uh, wickedness is still in us that came from since the time of uh, Adam. Yeah. <laughs> Let there be light. 
Hey. I also have another quick, uh, quick preset. Uh, let me read. This is uh, so it says all these things that we're going through is, is, a, is a lesson for us to seek righteousness, to seek the face of the Most High, to seek what is right, what is what is what is good. You know, because Esau Edom he doesn't know how to, to rule uh, uh, the earth in righteousness. As the scripture says, um, when the righteous rule the people um, no, when the wicked rule the people mourn, but when the righteous are in rulership, the people rejoice. You know? And that's what we're longing for. We're we're longing for, for righteousness. Because yeah man, all these the, the longer you're in the truth, the, the more you go into the scriptures, the more you see the wickedness and the, the ways of the, the Edomites. Because I saw an article today where a guy, a pedophile, he put on a, 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 a wig and he had a dress and he ran after some, some other uh, little boy that, that was jogging. And that's, that's his spirit, that's what he does. You know, he likes uh, little boys. As the scripture says, he sells, he sells a, a wine, uh, he sells a girl for wine and a boy for a harlot. So he, he lusts after little boys. And that's what's in his spirit. And if you see things like that, Esau Edom is gonna be like, oh, he needs a TPS, he needs to, you know, we gotta work with him because yeah, he's not right in his mind. It's, it's just a sickness, we got medication for that. We're gonna put him in society again, but he's gonna be protected and this and that. No man, something like that you gotta put to death straight away, you know. And that's that's not what these people are doing, and that's causing wickedness to, to be multiplied, you know. That's not good. Man. This is Joel chapter three, verse three. And they have cast lots for my people, and have given a boy for a harlot, and sold a girl for wine that they might drink. Yeah, that's that's uh, the spirit of Esau Edom. He lusts after little boys, that's what he does. If you go to, to uh, the scouts, there's always something with little boys. If you go to soccer, there's always something with little boys, you know? So his, his spirit is, is, is not good and he has to be <laughs> in chains and his mouth has to be shut, wired shut, so that he can't say shit, you know? Because his, his, uh, his opinion doesn't matter, fucking uh, dog. That I, uh, this is 1 John chapter 3 verse 4. Whosoever committed sin transgressed also the law, for sin is the transgression of the law. Yeah, so uh, whoever committed sin transgressed the law, and who has the law statutes and commandments been given unto? It has been given unto the so called blacks, Latinos, and Native Americans, because those are a, a royal people, those are the people of the Most High here upon earth. So they are the ones that can sin. They're the only ones that can sin. These other nations, they don't have the law, statutes, and commandments. They, they can eat whatever they want and uh, still live uh, to be 80. Because we can't live to be 100 right now because, because of all the pollutions. You know, but these, these other nations, Mo, Moab, they eat the most abominable things, but they, they don't die from uh, strokes and heart attacks like how we do. Those laws and and commandments, those were given unto the, the people of the Most High, which is the so called Blacks, Latinos, and Native Americans. This is Psalms chapter 90, verse 10. The days of our years are three score years and ten, and if by reason of strength they be four score years. Yet this is strength, labor, and sorrow, for it is soon cut off. Fly away. So basically, uh, you know, from the beginning we were basically made to be immortal. But uh, you know, we fell. You know, as we uh, we did in Genesis chapter six. You know, and after a while, you know, you know, we became, uh, you know, we died younger and younger. You know, eventually, our years were supposed to be 120. But in this day and age, you know, our, our, you know, we're happy if you, uh, if you turn 80 years. You know, and uh, Jake, you know, it could be that Jake dies between 40 and 50 to all the illnesses and diseases, you know, that we've been uh, basically put upon us. But, you know, we have a very, very short and basically tedious life, you know. Because uh, the, the book of Micah 2 speaks about that, you know, that uh, we're going to eat our defiled bread. Yeah. Uh, there was, there was other, but Micah 2 speaks about that. Thank you for having
Because I, I wrote my precept down there. <laughs> I believe it was Micah 2 uh, 10. It speaks about the Father. No. This is Micah 2 verse 10. Arise ye and depart, for this is not our rest, because it is polluted. It shall destroy you, even with a sore destruction. God, and that's why our people. We don't live to, to be a hundred anymore. We don't live to be full of age. Because if you go uh, to, what was it, Abraham, Isaac, I believe, uh, yeah, Isaac. I don't, I don't remember how old he was, but he was, some of, some of the men of the Lord, they, they were still in their full strength when they died, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Moses was there. <laughs> so those men, that's the stature that we're going to have, and even higher than that, because we're going to be changed, we're going to be in a different body, we're going to be totally different than, than back then, you know, it's going to be a new covenant, we're going to be immortal, we're going to be, uh, uh, yeah, no extraterrestrial, death. celestial bodies, that's what we're going to have, you know. Because as it says, in, uh, as, as it was chapter that I read in 1 John chapter 3 and 4, whosoever committed sin transgressed also the law, for sin is a transgression of the law. You know, we could read in Jeremiah chapter 31 verse 31 that the law should be put into our inward parts, which means we're not going to sin, which means we're going to, you know, live for eternity. You know, so hey, we got something beautiful to look forward to, you know, because right now our lives are short and tedious. But once, you know, Yahushai comes back, and in the blink of an eye, our bodies shall be changed. The law shall be put into our inward parts. You know, we're going to you know, live for eternity. You know, we're going to have the kingdom also forever. Which is a beautiful thing to look forward to. Yeah. But, but, before that, we got to go through these train and bait things. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we got to go uh, through that, that, um, that straight path, straight and narrow path. You know, where on the left side you have water, or vice versa, and on the right side you have fire. I have it for you. Uh, and that's the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of the Most High. That's uh, Isaiah 33 and 6 for you. Because you know what's at the end, but you also know what's going to come before that. So yeah, when you're in those times, then you're going to be able to, to, to withstand it. Because you know what's at the end of the marathon, at the end of the race. And also, uh, you know, we know what's going to happen upon the earth. You know, we know what the end goal is going to be, you know. And that's going to have us, you know, being stable and, and, and motivated. Motivated. All these people that are upon the earth that don't have the knowledge of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, you know, they're going to have no faith. As it says in the second Ezra chapter 5 and 1, you know, the land shall be barren of faith. But those that have the knowledge of Yahweh and understanding of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, they know that at, at the end, all the things that come upon the earth, which yeah. is Jacob's trouble, they know that their kingdom is waiting for them, you know, which, which, is, which, which is what we're striving for. You know, that, that, that is, you know, that's uh, no words to describe, man. No words to describe. Yeah. Yeah, when you're speaking about that, I'm thinking about what the Apostle Gabar said. It's going, it's going to be the darkest before the dawn. Yes. And that's what's going to happen. These people are going to be in gross darkness, as it speaks about in uh, Isaiah 59. They're not going to be prepared for what's going to happen. They're going to look for, for Egypt to, to, to save them, which the spiritual Egypt now is uh, Isaiah. Um, it's like yeah, Isaiah. So, that's uh, see. Yeah, it's funny because in Isaiah is it, it's, it's a scripture book to then go down to Egypt for help. Good, good. That's what all you are just thinking about. So, uh, Esau, they're going to go to Esau for, for help because that's how they're, they're going to be blinded, they're going to be darkened. But we are going to go to Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai for help. So these people are going to be in gross darkness because they don't know what the fuck is happening. We, we are trying to explain to you. We know how this devil works, how he operates, and things, certain things are going to be put in place and then he's going to attack. You know, so we are giving you bits and pieces of nuggets of knowledge. You know, but these people, they don't have that knowledge. The only thing that they have is uh, their, what their car carnal mind sees. And that's going to be darkened. And as Apostle Debar said, you know, it's going to be darkest before the dawn. And what's the dawn? Who's that morning star? That's uh, Yahweh Shai. When Yahweh Shai comes, 
that's when we're going to be turned like unto him in his glory. That's how we are going to become. So these people are going to be in darkness, but we are still going to think about, hey, wait a second, Yahweh is going to come. This, this is coming to fruition, so this means that Yahweh is going to come. Oh, I see that uh, Jacob's trouble is here. I see that uh, the... Yeah. I see that, um, what do you call it, martial law is coming, oh, Yahweh is coming, so, to me, to the men of the Lord, Yahweh is our every step of the way, is, hey, we're just one step closer to the kingdom, hey, we're one step closer to Yahweh, hey, you know, so yeah, that's, you, that's what, uh, that's what we're waiting on, these people are waiting, uh, are going to go to Egypt for help, but we are waiting to see, okay, where's the, that, that, that uh, dawn, you know, that, you know, when the, the sun comes up in the, in the morning, in the early morning, you see one ray of light, and then it lights the whole, uh, the whole heaven, you know, that's what we're going to be waiting for, yeah. And Isaiah 31, this is Isaiah chapter 31, verse 1, woe to them that go down to Egypt for help, and stay on horses, and trust in chariots, because they are many, and in horsemen, because they are very strong, but they look not unto the Holy One of Israel, neither seek the Lord Jehovah by Hashem Yahushai. That's Esau, that's what you're talking about Esau, because Esau has that military might, he has those uh, uh, exoskeleton suits, he has all kind of technology to, 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 to defy the Most High, because he knows what time is going to come, he knows there's going to be a so-called invasion, and that's what he calls it. You know, in all his movies, you see that um, their heroes are our enemies, and our heroes are their enemies. So when the Most High is going to send his son and his elect and everything to, 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 to cleanse the earth, then he wants to withstand. He, he, in his mind, he thinks that he can fight against the Most High. He has the power that the, the men of the Lord are going to get from the Most High. That's what he thinks. He truly thinks that. But as the scripture says, Woe unto them that go to, to Egypt, which is speaking about uh, America, which is speaking about Israel, uh, uh, the so-called white man. When he comes with his his chariots, then he's going to be defied by the Most High. The Most High is going to is going to destroy him. In the in the Valley of uh, Yahweh Shaphat, you know, in the Valley of Judgment, he starting with the, the so-called white man and the, the rest of these nations, they're going to be judged because that's what that word Yahweh Shaphat means, it's the Most High's judgment. So he's going to plead with these, these nations. How? Through, through, through the Bible, through his standards. They didn't uphold their standards. They didn't take care of the earth. They didn't uh, rule in uh, righteousness. So all of them are going to be destroyed. Man. All of the nations. Got a... Um Got a scripture to uh, back up the uh, previous one. This is Isaiah chapter 30, verse um, verse 1. Woe to rebellious children, said the Lord Jehovah, that they counsel, but not of me, and that cover with a covering, but not of my spirit. Right, so, these people that are rebellious, speaking about the, our own people, you know, the two thirds that are going to go to Esau for help. They don't seek counsel from the Most High, they seek counsel from, from Esau. So they are going to be destroyed. Woe means destruction. In a cover with a covering, not of my spirit, that they may add sin to sin. That walk to go down into Egypt, and have not asked at my mouth to strengthen themselves in the strength of Pharaoh, and to trust in the shadow of Egypt. Therefore shall the strength of Pharaoh be your shame, and the trust in the shadow of Egypt your confusion. Yeah, they're gonna be uh, put to shame by going to, to Esau either. When when the men of the Most High are gonna stand upon their feet, and they are gonna be, be standing on the side of Esau, they're gonna be destroyed also, man. They they cling onto Esau like like they're that's his savior. But your savior is Yahweh Shai, actually. But yeah, man, that's, that's the scriptures. The scriptures speak about that two thirds of a people are, are gonna continue in wickedness. They're gonna go to Egypt for help. And uh, they also gotta be be burnt up. Gonna have yep. that as well, man. Yeah. So they're they're gonna be all righteous. Israel is gonna be all righteous, but they're gonna come come through the seed of the men that made made it from the old world into the new world. Yeah. 
Jesus' uh, second Esdras, chapter 9, verse 9. Then shall they be pitiful case, which now have abused my ways, and they that have cast them away despitefully shall dwell in torment. Yeah. For they're, such they're going to be in a pitiful case. Also, the men that knew about this truth and that went back into the world, you know, they're going to be in a pitiful case also because you have uh, Shai tried and denied and uh, Johanna and uh, you have uh, Nate Satan, all those God. men, they're going to wake up to everlasting shame and contempt, you know, because they are, are abusing the Most High's ways. They know about the truth, but still they choose to go to Esau with the five, uh, what was it, 501c3 uh, chart. You know, so they have a covenant with Esau either. So they gotta be burnt up. That's a beautiful case. I have the official wake up This is Daniel chapter 12, verse 2. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake. Many of them that sleep in the dust shall awake, meaning the ones that are that are dead, the ones that, that lie in the ground. Some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. God, and that's speaking about in the kingdom. In the kingdom, they're gonna wake up, they're gonna be regenerated, they're going to be uh, reborn, but some of them are going to be shameful and in, in contempt. They're going to be looking at the men of the Lord that made it from the old world into the new world, where the, they're going to be shamefaced. They're going to be like, oh shit, you know, I went for the filthy lucre in the in the old world and this is what I what I have right now. Nothing. Yeah, not nothing. Yeah, they're going to be, we're, we're all going to be all righteous and great in the kingdom, but they're not going to be up there. Like, right now they're up there, right now they have their congregation and stuff, but in that time, everybody's going to be like, no, man, man, went to the filthy loop. First of the last, and the last of the first. Yep. This is back in 2nd Esther, chapter 9, verse 10. For such as in their life have received benefits, and have not known me, and they that have loathed my law, while they yet had liberty, and when as yet place of repentance was opened unto them, Understood it not, but despised it. The same. God, this is Second Ezra, chapter nine, verse eleven. And they that have loathed my law, will they yet have liberty? Uh, verse ten. For such as in their life have received benefits and have not known me. Yeah, they receive benefits. And what I'm thinking about is. Um, what was it? Ecclesiastes 7 and 7, you know, where it speaks about the gift destroying the heart. And that's what Esau does. Esau comes with gifts. He comes with these, um, how do you call it? In, in America, uh, 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 it's with the S. What was it called? They come with these gifts when people are hurt by this, by this uh, corona. What do you call it? Stimulus check. Stimulus, stimulus check. Order. So he comes with the, the stimulus checks. So those are the gifts that uh, the two third receive with all gladness. They're like, oh, hey, I never earned this much money, so I'm gonna uh, stay at home and uh, uh, rejoice about this money. You know, so those are the gifts that, that they come with. Uh, and have not known me, if they that have loathed my law, or they yet had liberty. And when it's yet place of repentance was opened unto them, understood not, but despised them. God, so now they have the liberty, meaning the, 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 the freedom to, to choose for the Most High, to seek repentance. Because they already went into that word repentance, that it means to be sorry. And if you go into uh, Acts 17, where it speaks about that the Most High winked at our transgressions, and that was the time of repentance. He wants everybody to repent that has to come to repentance. You know, so that's why the, the angel is also uh, holding back the destruction so that everybody that has to have this this uh, this mark on their foreheads, they are going to be sealed and then the destructions are come. This is Acts chapter uh, 17 and 30. At the time, at the time of this ignorance, the most I wait that that's not speaking about us, you know, we were ignorant, meaning we didn't know about the law and the commandments, we didn't know that we were Israelites, we didn't know that we had to keep the law and the ways of the Most High. So he winked at our transgressions in that time. But, but now commanded all men everywhere to repent. 
he commanded all men everywhere to repent. Speaking about the, who is he speaking to? He's speaking to uh, the Israelites. So all men everywhere speak about the Israelites scattered all over the four corners of the earth. So they have to be called back to repentance. To be precise, he was talking to the to the Israelites in, uh, in ethnic streets. Um, back in Second Esdras chapter nine and, uh, and verse twelve. The same must know it after death by pain. After death by pain. So it's not going to be just death and you're like, Oop, you're taken away. No, man, it's not going to be like uh, when you pass away in your sleep, all peaceful. No, it's going to be with pain and with gnashing of teeth. As it speaks about in the book of uh, Proverbs uh, 1, you know, that they didn't seek the way of the, the Most High when there was time to repent. So they are going to know, know no death by pain. No pain. It's funny that we you know, wanted to start with yeah. that. No. <laughs> and now it goes back to that. Full circle. So you can get that in Isaiah 55. Let's go into Isaiah 55 first. And then I will go into the problem. Uh, uh, and uh, start with um, seek, the, the, seek the way of the Lord. Verse 5. So. That and then you go from there. In uh, Isaiah? Yeah. Isaiah 55. Go, go, go. This is Isaiah chapter uh, 55, verse 6. Seek ye the Lord Jehovah, but I shall me how shy, while he may be found. And that's speaking about this period, this grace period that the Most High has to uh, for, for the men of the Lord, that they can come to repentance. This is the grace period, and that's what. Uh, the, the Isaiah 55 is talking about that's when he might be found because we are still here on the street so you can see that get this wisdom knowledge understanding through YouTube you can get it by coming here and uh, coming with questions so that's the time that repentance was uh, was open actually go ye upon him while he is near God. so this is the period that he's there this is the time period that he is calling you there through the, the afflictions. You know, if you're being afflicted, you're, you're looking for answers. Like, why am I in this predicament? Why nothing is happening uh, like how I choose? Why am I not uh, making it big in this world? That's because the Most High has a purpose for you. And the purpose is not to be uh, linked with the world, but to come back to repentance. You know? Because that, that's something you got to understand. When you see that things are not going like you want, like you planned, because... Uh, in Matthew 6, it speaks about uh, what, what the Gentiles seek for. They seek for uh, uh, money, they seek for uh, security. But if you want to have that in this world, you're going to be destroyed with this world. So he's calling you there by giving you afflictions, by giving you a hard time in this world. So he's calling you there. So this is the time that you have to come back to the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. And what's wisdom, knowledge, and understanding is seen like onto food, which we're going to go into. This is uh, Isaiah chapter 55, verse 1. Ho, oh, everyone that thirsted, come ye to the waters. And he that hath no money, come ye and buy and eat. Yea, come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. Carter, that speaks about the, the scriptures because the scriptures are seen as, as wine, as waters, the, the, the fountain of living waters. If you go to Psalms uh, 23. Then it speaks, it shows you that it's also pasture, you know. Yeah, man, so this is food to be consumed, and you shouldn't sell it with a with a price because you have been given it freely. Freely give, freely receive, freely give. I have to show you that it's. This wisdom, knowledge, and understanding is speaking about speaking about uh, food, and that it has to be consumed. This is a uh, Revelation 10, verse 10. And I took the little book out of the angel's hands, which is the the Bible, and I ate it up. You see, he ate it up, meaning um, it's figuratively for consuming the food. And it was in my mouth, sweet as honey. So that's the that's the that's the sweet part when you hear that you're an Israelite that you're going to receive the kingdom and that uh, all these blessings are going to rest upon us. And as soon as I had eaten it, 
in my uh, eaten it, my belly was bitter, and bitter, which means uh, render angry, irritated. You know, so actually, when you read the scriptures, then you're happy because of the the, the end of the, the scriptures, but the the path towards it is going to be bitter. It's going to be hard. It's going to be sorrowful. You know. And you also have a scripture in Job. Let me get that. Job 32. Job 34, verse 2. Hear my words, O ye wise men, and give ear unto me, ye that have knowledge. For the ear tried words, as the mouth tasted meat. You see, so the ear tried words. The way the ear consumes words is like how the mouth consumes food. So this is wisdom and knowledge, which which is uh, actually food, food for thought. That's what they also say in the in the world. You know. I have uh, a precept. Yep. It's Ezekiel chapter two, verse nine. But when I looked, behold, a hand was sent unto me, and lo, a rule of a book was therein, and he spread it before me. And it was written within and without. There was written therein a lamentation, a mourning, a woe. So that's the that's that bitter part when you read the scriptures. You know, you see, you see lamentations and woe. What we went through, what we're gonna have to go through, because we read the book of Lamentations in two, uh, two and uh, five, where it speaks about how the Most High he took violently took everything away from us. So that's that's something bitter to read. You know that 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 brings a uh, uh, sorrow to your heart. But then you have that sweet part. King do prepare for us, you know, when he gets spiritual powers, you yeah. know, live for eternity, basically gonna be immortal, you know, gonna have all the females, man. It's Isaiah 41, you know, <laughs> seven uh, women shall three whatsoever. Which goes into a uh, perfect number, a perfect number for you, you know. Uh, another precept for Isaiah. This is Hebrews chapter 5, verse 12. Because the scripture also says that the eyes have not seen, ears have not heard. So you don't know what is prepared for you. We're going to have other bodies. We're going to have supernatural powers. We're going to be able to bend the elements. You know, the, the, the book of uh, Revelation speaks about the 12 gates and how it's, it's arrayed the kingdom. But still, eyes and ears, uh, eyes haven't seen and ears haven't heard. So it's, it's uh, beyond your man imagination. But we, we try to imagine it. You know, you got brothers that come with uh, beautiful uh, pictures, you know, to get you motivated and fired up in the spirit, you know. And that's all of the will of the Most High. This is uh, Hebrews chapter 5 verse 12. For when for the time you ought to be teachers, you have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of the Most High, and are become such as have need of milk and not of strong meat. God, so when... This is one of the, the scriptures that shows you that the scriptures is also seen as milk. Because you can't come with these heavy laws and uh, heavy breakdowns upon, upon uh, somebody that just converted. Which the word convert means to, to come back, to return back to your heritage. You can't come heavy upon him. You have to uh, come with milk scriptures. You gotta show him certain small things so that you know you don't cause him to, to stumble. You, know? you as a as a man of the Lord should guide him with, in meekness, in all meekness, as the scripture says. You should uh, use salt also when you talk to certain people. You can't, you, know, you need to know your audience. You can't come all hard upon everybody. You, know, you can't come forwardly to a man that is soft spoken. Then you're gonna, you're gonna uh, uh, basically break his spirit. Verse 13 For everyone that uses milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. So if you are teaching with milk, that means you're, you're a babe. We're, we're all babes actually, but if you're a teacher, you can't come with only milk scriptures. You gotta come with, um, with, with dark sayings also. Why? It's not that you gotta come with dark sayings. It's like when somebody comes with a, with a, with a question, you need, to, you need to answer them according to the law, statutes, and commandments. And if you yourself are still a babe and you haven't um, read a whole lot or that, that you don't know a lot of breakdowns you can't really help that man that is in front of you coming with uh, these difficult questions because you are still a babe that is uh, reading from the milk from the 
wrestling. Nope. Verse, uh, verse 14. But strong meat belongeth to them that are full of age, even those who by reason of use have, have, have their senses exercised to serve both good and evil. God, their senses exercised to serve both good and evil. That's when you have been in this truth for years that you have the capability to discern spirits. You, know, you have the capability to discern uh, good from evil. And this strong meat, this strong meat is also the, the, the dark saying of the scriptures. If you go into the dark sayings, that's 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 rough. You need to have a, a good understanding of the good scriptures. You need to have a good overall understanding so that you can um, so that you can break down the scriptures correctly. And actually, you have to get the, the breakdown from the apostles because they are the men that Yahweh Shemayachai set up before you to give you the, the correct breakdown. You can't come with your own uh, breakdown. You can't come with uh, presumptuous uh, breakdowns. You have to come with the breakdown as it has been taught to you. This is Psalms chapter 23, verse 1. The Lord Yahweh is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures, he leadeth me beside still waters. Gone. So the, the green pastures, what is that? The green pastures is speaking about this truth. If you go to the book of uh, what was it, Jeremiah 23. The sheep in my pasture? So he maketh me to lie down in the green pastures, and the green pastures is speaking about the truth. And uh, Jeremiah 3 and 15 is going to explain. He leadeth me beside the still waters, and the waters also represent the truth. I have a precept on that, by the way, that the waters is the doctrine. This is Jeremiah 3 verse 15. And I will give you pastors according to mine heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. And it shall come to pass, when ye be multiplied and increased in the land, in those days of the Lord Jehovah, they shall no more say, they shall say no more the ark of the covenant of the Lord Jehovah. Neither shall it come to mind, neither shall they remember it, neither shall they visit it, neither shall that be done any more. And at that time, so Jerusalem throne of the Lord Jehovah, and all the nations shall be gathered into it, to the name of the Lord Jehovah, to Jerusalem, neither shall they walk any more after the imaginations of their evil heart. Yep, they're speaking about the kingdom, in the kingdom we're going to be all righteous, but if you go into that word, the pastor, uh, can you read it again? I will give you pastors according, yeah, I will give you pastors uh, according to my own heart. If you go into that word pastor, it means uh, in the Lashon Korach, it's ra, ra and the outline of biblical usage says to pasture, tend, graze, feed. So a pastor is supposed to feed the, the flock. He's supposed to feed the Israelites. He's supposed to feed the sheep of the, the sheep of the Yahweh Bashem Yahushai. And if you read further, it says uh, to, to feed, to graze, sheep. Uh, sheep. Why did I say sheep every time? Sheep and Israel as flock. See, so it even explains to you that pastors are supposed to feed Israel as a flock. And that's why the, the, the pasture, the green pasture, is seen as a as, uh, truth. It's seen as based on knowledge and understanding. As we just read in Jeremiah 3 and 15. He's going to give us pastors according to his heart, which shall feed you with what? Wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, which is the truth. Deuteronomy chapter 32 verse 2 My doctrine shall drop as the rain 
my speech shall distill as the dew, and the small rain upon the tender herb, and as the showers upon the grass. So uh, the, the speech of the Most High, what is that? That's the, the words of the Bible, you know, and it's going to descend upon all the earth. It's going to descend upon everything, you know. So that's that's when everything is going to be in all righteousness, when everything is going to be in, the, in balance. And also, um, Yahweh Shai said, uh, let me see, Matthews, you know, come to me, all that are weary. Matthew 11. 11 and Matthew 11. So I'm after 11. Gotcha. Yeah, this is Matthew 11, verse 28. Come unto me, these are red letters, so this is Yahweh Shai speaking. All ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. And that's that uh, still waters. It's not rough waters, it's, it's still. Because we know we are at ease through these scriptures, through the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. We are at ease. It's not, it's not over, overtaking us as a, as a flood. No. But the scripture also is um, seen as, 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 yeah, actually as a flood. Because the way it's coming right now is, is like a rushing flood. You know, but it's not overtaking us. The thing is, YouTube is being used as, as a, a medium, as a, a tool to, to flood the people with the truth. And after a while, that, that the flood gates are going to be shut. And that's going to be the spirit of the Most High that's going to shut these flood gates. I have a quick scripture that I'm going to... This is Job, chapter 39, verse 9. Will the unicorn be willing to serve thee, or abide by the crib? Canst thou bind the unicorn with his band in the furrows? Or will he herald the valleys after thee? Will thou trust him, because his strength is great? Or will thou cleave thy labor to him? Will thou believe him, that he will bring home thy seed, and gather it into thy barn? Yeah. And, um, yeah. So the, 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 the unicorn, you know, a unicorn basically resembles one horn, and a horn resembles power, and um, it basically resembles a feed horn, which uh, basically resembles a satellite or antenna, which is the internet. You know, it also says, um, in verse 9, it says, will the unicorn be willing to serve thee? Well, uh, a serf can also go into a server, which is uh, the servers that the internet is basically being established upon. And the, uh, the crib refers to the, the, if you look at a crib, basically it's a feeding trough. You know, which is uh, the YouTube pages that are uh, that the brothers basically set up. Um, in verse 10, it says, "Canst thou bind the unicorn uh, with his band in the furrows? Uh, bind actually goes into grab hold or control, which basically use. You know, can you use it? Uh, and furrows uh, goes into accumulator store, which are these videos being put on the uh, YouTube pages." And it says, uh, verse, uh, and it also says, will uh, the hero of the valleys have to be? Hero means to lead straight, which means to uncover the truth. And how is the truth being uncovered? Well, first and foremost, the other apostles of Great Millstone, they stood on the streets for years without being able to publish their videos. But once in 2008, the truth, the truth came on YouTube through the other apostles of Great Millstone. And that was basically, you know, the, the year in which the truth, you know, basically came, 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 came across the whole world, you know, which basically, uh, you know, came from, uh, from New York, you know, and, and that's, that's basically how the, how the truth, you know, from scriptures is being uncovered, you know, so it's basically uh, the YouTube and the internet were basically made for us to, uh, to, do, the, to do the ministry for Yahweh Hashem, you know, that's what the unicorn in uh, Job chapter, uh, 39 verse 9 to verse 12 actually goes into it, you know, so uh, you have to back. Yep. Okay. Oh, yeah, it's full. Number one, number two? Um, no, 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 no. Yeah, it's number one.
Ja, maar het is niet dus, uh, goed genoeg. Uh... Oké, okay, dus je bent. Uh... Ik ben straks terug. <laughs> ik weet wat er ja. Ja, dit is uh, Jeremiah 5, vers 20. Declare this in the house of Jacob and publish it in Judah, saying, Hear now this, O foolish people, and without understanding, which have eyes and see not, which have ears and hear not. Cancel. In uh, Jeremiah 5 and 20, it, it says, Declare this in the house of Jacob and publish in Judah. Meaning in the, in the Israelites, you know, everywhere where the Israelites are, that's the, the that's a little Israel right there. And it says publish. So what do you do when you go on YouTube, you upload your video? What is what is that button that you gotta press to send it out in the world? That's that word publish. You know, so spiritually that's what we're doing right now. We're we're spreading the word and we're spreading the spirit. Because I made a video about how we have, through Yahweh Shai, the power to condemn these demons. Oh, yeah, not condemn to, um, yeah. Like, uh, in a, what does the exorcist do? He chases away demons, right? And through Yahweh Shai, we have that power to do that through our videos. Because the men of the Lord, they're being plagued by demons. And, yeah, me, myself, a couple of months back or, or something, then... I started to have, I feel something is in me which, which wasn't there before. I'm like, huh, well, what is this? You know, so I'm like, wait a second, I, I feel like demons are jumping up on me. You know, as a man of the Lord, you, you can feel that. You can uh, hear those, those voices or whispers and stuff like that, things that weren't in you before. Because why? Because you are getting heightened in the spirit, you're getting strengthened in the spirit, you are rebuking spirits through your videos because people learn through your videos and the demons that are upon those people, what happened to uh, the, the, spirit, the spirits that were on the man in the tomb? I think it was a man in the tomb that Jehovah Shai rebuked. The spirits, they, they said, yeah, um, can you send us in those, those herd of swines that we uh, can go into them? You know, and Yahweh Shai said, okay, you can go. And then the spirits, they leaped into the water. Know, so showing you that these spirits they need a vessel and when you rebuke somebody through your video as I was uh, uh, reading in that you, you publish it through through YouTube these spirits they flee from these people but then they need a vessel and they're gonna jump on you but you're gonna ask like how, how well what are you talking about through a video you can uh, rebuke Satan or rebuke spirits or um, the, uh, you know um, uh, practice exorcism why not because through a video you also got the Holy Spirit upon you you didn't see uh, Apostle Tahar, Apostle Kapoor, Apostle Arrival, Apostle, Apostle Raka in front of you mm. in uh, you know uh, face to face no you saw it on YouTube and that's when the Holy Spirit started to, to dwell with you then you got the understanding so how is it a crazy thing that you can get demons from people by explaining things uh, on YouTube? It's not, it's not very uh, difficult to understand. So through your videos, you can rebuke spirits because through videos, you also receive the Holy Spirit. You see? Okay, so reading again, uh, Jeremiah 5 and 20, declared this in the house of Jacob and published in, Ju in, in Judah saying, Hear now this, O foolish people, and without understanding, God, because our people, they're foolish. They're quick to do to evil, but to know righteousness, they, they don't know how to. You know, as the scripture says in uh, Proverbs 1, as we're going to go into, it speaks about how our people, they love simplicity. They're foolish. They're sought as children. So, hear now this, O foolish people, and without understanding, which have eyes and see not, which have ears and hear not. And so these people, they, they hear. Uh, as the scripture says, he that have an ear, let him hear. These people have ears, but they don't want to understand what is being said unto them. They hear it, but the, the angel is also blocking them, because this word is not for everyone. This is for a certain portion for the men that sigh and that cry in, the, in Babylon for the wickedness that is being done in, in Babylon. You know, not everybody is sighing and crying. All these other people, they're, they're, 
rejoicing, they're, they're, they're um, yeah, how can you say it? Indulging themselves in the wickedness that 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 is uh, upon the earth, that is in Babylon. They only focus on on cars and on girls and on everything that Esau brings to the table. Camera, which in the hotel room. I have the Isaiah. You want to continue Isaiah 55? Uh, was it not me? Was it not me? Uh, Disregard or disobedience of authority, the law, etc. General sense of act, general sense of act of despising, scorn for what is mean, vile, or worthless. Yeah, so they, they despise the words of Yahweh Basham Yahushai. Even though we we're explaining that to them, they just walk by and they don't uh, pay no mind. So that's what uh, that word contempt goes into despising the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, despising the, the words of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. And these people, it's going to explain what's going to be the end. Gone. This is Proverbs chapter 1, verse 20. Wisdom cried without. She uttered her voice in the streets. Gone. So that's why we are commanded to stand in the streets, in the streets, in the highways and byways to declare wisdom unto these people. Because if you are in a in a chapel or in a synagogue or in a building, people can't really come to you to ask questions or they don't hear the, the words in the, uttered in the street. Because that's because that that that's what uh, the scripture says. You know, wisdom is going to be uttered in the streets. I have the scriptures. This is Matthew chapter 22, verse 9. Go ye therefore to the highways, and as many as ye shall find, bid to marriage. Because this thing of ours is a marriage. It's a marriage with who? With the Lamb. And who's the Lamb? The Lamb is Yahweh Shai. So we are bidding people to the marriage of Yahweh Shai. Because in four times, as the brother read, I forgot which scripture it was. Romans 15 and 4? Was it that? No, it so was written four times with four names? No, it was a, a scripture where it speaks about Yahweh was a, a, a husband unto us. I think it was Lamentations. But Ezekiel, that, uh, Jeremiah 31 and 3. Around 31. Yeah, yeah, 31. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because, because the scripture says that uh, Yahweh was a husband unto us, but he divorced us. You know, that's um, that's in Jeremiah 17, where we will not know our heritage. Or, or in uh, 2 Thessalonians, I believe 2 Thessalonians. It speaks about... Can you grab that? The one that is... Uh, a spouse? window in what the link is meant, Jeremiah 17. The, uh, we well, shall discuss the oh, second Thessalonians yeah. chapter 2. If you go into that word, then it, it speaks about how the Most High is going to divorce us. Yeah. 
Second Thessalonians, chapter 2, and verse, uh, uh, no, verse 3. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except the coming or falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. So let me see falling away. Speak on it. I can't remember which scripture it was. It was either this one in, or in uh, Jeremiah, but it speaks about that uh, the Most High has uh, divorced us because we, he was a husband unto us, but we despised him. Yeah, you're not going to find it like that. Because you have to go into the word and then you see that it also means divorce. I think it was uh, Jeremiah 17. So the, the Most High, he divorced us from uh, being his husband, uh, uh, that he is our husband. So he now puts Yahushai as the husband, so that's the that's the marriage that we're being bid, bidding these people onto. Because if you go into, you can also go into that. Was it Revelations? Yeah. Yeah. The one in Revelation where it speaks about the marriage of the, the lamb, that the lamb that was slain. No, we can uh, explain that that part. You got it, Revelation. Chased virgin to Yahushai. Second Corinthians 11 and 12. 
God. So we are that espoused virgin of uh, the Most High because it also says the 144, they're not going to be going after other gods. They're going to be uh, virgins, meaning they're not going to be defiled with other other philosophies. So, so uh, 144,000, they're not going to be Muslims, they're not going to be in any other doctrine but the, the doctrine of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Revelations chapter 14, verse. Uh, that's, that's, that's the analogy, that's the. Uh, yeah. um, that's what it means to be a virgin. First, first, first. Come on. This is Revelations chapter 14, verse 1. And I looked, and lo, a lamb stood on the Mount Zion, and with him a hundred and forty and four thousand, having his father's name written in their foreheads. Come on, that lamb is speaking about Jehovah Shai. And, and I heard a voice from heaven, as the voice of many waters, and as the voice of great thunder. God, and uh, the, the first verse that uh, the brother read, having the father's name written in their foreheads. It's not speaking about the father's uh, by name or the father's title, or the, no, the father's name, meaning the men of the Most High are going to have the name of the Most High, which the name is Yahweh. And uh, Bahashem is in the name of Yahweh Shai, is the, people, the person who everybody ignorantly calls Jesus. So the men are going to have the name. That's very important. Can I add on to that? Um, because it was just at uh, Camp Peter's house, and he said that uh, you know, in the, in, the, in the Greek, it goes into having both the, the names of the Son and the Father, which is Yahweh Basham Yosha. Yes, my spirit. You know, so <laughs> I, I broke it down as I said it, but yeah. it wasn't even written down like that. Um, but I'm trying, you know, I'm not good with the. Uh, Greek, but you know, I'm trying to look it up. But you know, that was what the brother, uh, what the elder brother said. So, uh, yeah. Because um, the, the scripture says, uh, "This is my son; in him am, I am well pleased." So he is going to have the the. He's going to be in the ways of Yahweh, uh, of his father. He's. If you see him, you're going to see a spitting image of his father. So you have to have both. You have to have uh, Yahweh Bahasham Yahweh Shai. Because everything you also ask in the name of Yahweh Shai, that's what he's, you're, you're going to receive. So that all these things, all these uh, nuggets of knowledge, all these uh, secrets, the men of the Lord is going to take that and <laughs> almost abuse it. Because in all my prayers, Bahasham Yahweh Shai. Bahasham Yahweh Shai. Not, not, not only Yahweh, you know. Of course we have Yahweh, but... When you read the scriptures, then you see the, the, the little nuggets and trinkets of the Bible, and then you're like, oh, I should add that in there. Oh, wisdom, knowledge, and stability shall be the uh, wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times. Oh, let me make a prayer about that. Let me put that in my prayer also. You know, and that's how you are gonna be a, a, a fountain of uh, life, of uh, living water. You know, so when you teach, then you also are gonna be taught how through the Holy Spirit. I have a scripture. This is John chapter 14, verse 13. And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. Yeah, that's, that's just to the Spirit. That's dope, man. Because that, that also proves that whatever you ask in His name, the Father is glorified. And what did we just read? That the Father's name should be in their foreheads. So those two you can also link. It's not literally, but because you know the scriptures, you can link those two together. This is back in Revelations, chapter 14, verse 2. And I heard a voice from heaven as the voice of many waters, and as the voice of a great thunder. And I heard the voice of harpers harping with their harps. And they sung as it were a new song before the throne and before the four beasts and the elders. God, and that new song is speaking about this truth because this truth, it has been taken away from us, but now it's uh, refreshed. That's this gospel because uh, these uh, Christians, they love to use that word gospel. Do you know the gospel? Do you know the truth? Do you know that 
gospel, they, they see it as a song, but it really is a song. You know, and only the 144,000, they are going to know that they're going and are going to sing and dance to that song. Because uh, as it says in the Book of Lamentations, you know, we have piped onto you, but you haven't listened, you haven't uh, lamented, you haven't mourned. You know, and that's what we're doing right now. We're, we're lamenting onto these people. As we just said, you know, we're sorrowful for what happened. We're sorrowful for our sins. We're sorrowful for, for, for the state that the, the earth is in. Can I answer that? Go. Because in Matthew chapter 24, verse 14, it says, and then the words of this gospel shall be preached into all the world and all the kingdoms, and then shall the end come. So if, 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 the, if the doctrine of all these other Christian denominations, of this, this, this Islam bullshit, if that was the truth, you know, the end would have already come. But that's not the case, you know, because this this is the truth. And, you know, right now, the spirit of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh we are reaching the four corners of the earth, starting off with the other apostles, great millstone on down. Yeah. Yeah. And you don't uh, you don't always see your fruits, and actually that shouldn't matter to you as a man of the Lord. You should preach this and uh, prophesy unto the wind, as we just started with, because the Most High is working uh, in. Yeah, I don't want to say in secret, but he's working behind the scenes. Like you, you have the script, you know, you are uh, uh, on, the, on the podium, you're doing your thing, but behind the scenes, things are being prepared. Like uh, Romans 11 says, you know, that I have uh, reserved unto me 500 men that did not uh, bow the knee to Baal. And you, you can see that manif manifest how. If you look at uh, that video that the elder uh, Manata Sakba made, that people came to him bearing gifts and stuff ah. like that, you know, that he asked them, okay, so how did you come in the truth? Who do you follow? They're like, you, we, we follow you. He's like, oh, yeah. you know, so people are following you that uh, you don't even know them, but uh, the Most High is preparing them in the spirit. They might be of the elect, they might be, uh, they might be um, of the one third, but they are also going to get the prophet's reward, which is salvation, you know. Yeah, right, is up. Thank you. So that, that new that new song, if you go into that word new, it means refreshed or regenerated. So it's it's it sounds new. And uh, one of the younger brothers last week he explained the dream uh, unto me that you know he he was hearing some music. He was he was standing somewhere and he was dancing uh, to that music. I'm like, yeah, that's scripture, man. So I gave him the scripture uh, because. You know, um, when you're in the street, you don't always uh, comprehend what you're dreaming about. And if you explain it to an other brother that has been longer in the truth or that came across certain scriptures, he might uh, be able to break it down onto you. You know, and then you're going to understand. Because me, myself, I also had a dream when I started it, started with the truth. And it was with, uh, that we were listening to somebody that had a, a gray beard, you know, and you... What does that represent? Somebody with wisdom, you know. So we, uh, as a camp, were listening to them. But then, all of a sudden, I saw people started to run, and the, the people were actually the Akem from the, the other countries. And we're like, hey, everybody's running, so we gotta run. But, but this is, you know, it's wisdom, and I want to hear everything. But no, man, you, you gotta run. You gotta run this race. I didn't even uh, know that scripture. So when I spoke about it, the, the brother broke it down to me that, you know. All ye that run the race, you know, you, you run for a corruptible, but we run for an incorruptible. So in my in my dream, everybody they, they started to run. So we jumped into a car and we started to, you know, try to keep up with them. So we, we, we jumped in half halfway in the in the race, and then we started to run. So yeah, my yard is out that we all run that race for that uh, uncorru incorruptible crown. That's the book of uh, Revelations 3 and uh, 11 says, you know, let no man take thy crown. And that's what we're striving towards. Come, back in Revelations chapter, um, chapter 14, verse, uh, verse 3. And now I understand how the videos from the, the, the elders go like this. Because we, we are trying to explain something, but it, it, you, you go into something else, but then you get a, a fuller and wider understanding of uh, the scriptures. You know, it's not always that you, you you can keep it short and sweet. Yep. It's like the wind. Yep. <laughs> Don't quench the spirit. 
Revelation chapter 14 verse 3 and they sung as it were a new song before the throne and before the four, before the four beasts and the elders and no man could learn that song but the hundred and forty and four thousand which were redeemed from the earth. That's redeemed means to buy back because they were on the earth, they were, they were from, the world, uh, from the world and they were taken from the world, that's why they are redeemed. You know? Verse 4, these are they which were not defiled with women. And if you go into that word defiled, it is uh, melanos, which actually which is uh, stained. They are not stained with women because these philosophies are seen as a strange woman. You know, if you, if you go into yeah, the Old Testament, it speaks about yeah, Proverbs, I believe. Proverbs 6. Yeah. Don't go into the ways of a strange woman, which means uh, these philosophies. Proverbs uh, chapter uh, five, five and three, verse six, six and three. Six and three. Well, uh, this is Proverbs chapter six, verse twenty-three. For the commandment is a lamp, and the law is light, and reproofs of instruction are the way of life, to keep thee from the evil woman, from the flattery of the tongue of a strange woman. Uh, see these uh, these other philosophies. If you don't go into the law. The, the ways of the Most High, the Law, Statutes, and Commandments, then these other philosophies are strange. They're a strange woman, you know, because wisdom is a woman. Sophia is a, is a woman. If you go into wisdom in the, in the Greek, it is Sophia, you know, so we have her. We don't, uh, we don't go to these, these other um, philosophies because these other philosophies, they're, they're destruction, man, because these other gods, they can't even protect themselves. People gotta carry them out of the, the, the churches and synagogues and whatnot. Back in Revelation chapter 14, verse 3. These are they which are not defiled with women, for they are virgins. These are they which follow the Lamb, with us wherever he goeth. God, and you can link that also with uh, John, John 10, when my sheep shall hear my voice, you know, whatever, wherever he goeth, that's where the sheep are gonna be. So we, as that that uh, virgin, we will go wherever the lamb goes, which is uh, Yahweh Shai. And that, that chief shepherd in uh, John 10 is also speaking about Yahweh Shai. So we have many different uh, allegories and ways of explaining that the, the, the scriptures. Because something might not appeal to you in one scripture, and then the other part does appeal to you. And after a while, when you're uh, being into, into the truth, then you are going to get a fuller understanding. So that's why the, the scripture, it is written in diff different ways, in many ways, so that the scriptures can uh, guide the men that walk in different paths. Because we all are uh, one body, but we all are different. Everybody has their, their own um, office. Yeah, yeah, their own office and their own mannerism of doing things. The scripture also says that not every man is uh, pleased in the same thing. I believe it's in the book of Sirach. Yeah. So uh, the, the scriptures uh, use different allegories and analogies for every everybody, you know. and commandments, you know, because these laws are not previous. They were made for us to, to uh, enlarge in our, our quality of living and also uh, to, to enlarge in our days of life, you know. Um, verse 28, for all things that are profitable for all men, 
neither have every soul pleasure in everything. So neither have every soul pleasure in everything. So um, what I like doesn't have to be the same thing as this brother likes or as the brother behind the camera likes. So the, the, the analogies in the Bible are different for, for everybody. You know, but after a while you're going to get the fullness of the, of the Bible and then you're going to be able to explain it to, in, in every way. Revelations chapter 14 verse 3. Read it uh, for um, read it from the top. No, no. These are they which follow the Lamb. Um, these are they which follow the Lamb whithersoever he goeth. These were redeemed from among men, being the first fruits to the most high and to the Lamb. God and the first fruits is speaking about the elect, you know, the the um, the how do you call it? The powers, Alahayam. You know, they were the first spirits created. You, you, you had um, Yahweh was created first, but then you had the first fruit, which is the, the 144,000. Know. Verse 5 and In their mouth was found no guile, for they were without fault before the throne of the Most High. God, and guile goes into uh, trickery, deceit, you know. In their mouths wasn't found any guile because they used the scriptures. You know, they, they seek out things in the scriptures and then they explain it to you. But the, these other shepherds that come in, uh, the, the hirelings, you know, uh, these other other camps, they their mouth is full of guile. They don't explain everything according to, to the scriptures. They leave certain things out. You know, they tell you you're in captivity, but oh well, you know, try to enjoy it as, as long as you can because uh, salvation is going to come. How? Yeah, I don't know, but uh, <laughs> but we know that it's going to come through the cherish of salvation. You know. But these uh, other people, they don't, uh, other um, other groups, they don't speak on that. This is uh, Muslim Solomon, chapter 5, verse, uh, verse 1. <clears throat> then saw the righteous man stand in great boldness before the face of such as have afflicted him, and made no... I made no account of his labors. Um, the spirit of Yahweh Yahushai. We're proclaiming these words in all truth and safety, boldness for our enemies, you know, and uh, without showing any fear. But uh, you know, these people that are walking by, even of our own people, you know, they look at us like, what is he doing? You know, every Saturday wearing, you know, a garment like this, you know, preaching the word. You know, they make they make no account of our labors. But what does it say in verse 2? When they see it, they shall be troubled with terrible fear. They shall be amazed at the strangeness of this salvation so far beyond all that they look for. But we are preaching that salvation you know, comes when Yahweh Shai comes back. But when he comes back, he comes back with a, you know, with a, with a so-called UFO. You know, the chariot of Yahweh Shai. You know, but this world, they believe through you know, the deception of the media that an alien invasion shall come take place. You know, and, and eventually, you know, the elect, you know, which uh, consists of the uh, 144,000 and the number of multitude, you know, they're going to be beamed up in those chariots. You know, but the world, you know, they, they're going to think that an alien invasion is coming upon the earth. You know? um, which is going to seem to them as a strange act. Like, yeah. uh, how are they yeah. being beamed up and yeah. we're not being beamed up? And what, what's happening? Come on. Come on. And then they're going to see the Israelites beam being beamed up and then they're going to see the missiles coming down. Verse 3. And they repenting and groaning for anguish of spirit shall say within themselves, This was he whom we had sometimes in derision and a proverb of reproach. Because they're basically talking crap about the things that we're doing, man. They, they, they. Verse 4. We fools accounted his life for madness and his end to be without honor. What does the scripture say? Um, it pleased the Most High through the foolishness of preaching. But the Most High is delighting in the things that we're doing, man. It's a light thing that we should bring back our nation. Yeah, that's also in the book of uh, Ezekiel 37. You see? Uh, this is uh, 
verse 5, how is he numbered among the children of the Most High and his lot is among the saints. You know, when, the, when those people look at us, you know, they see us as, you know, they see the brothers as so-called, you know, niggers, spigs. You know, they see me uh, between them and be like, you know, what is he doing between them? You know, they, 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 the people of this world, they think that in order to be at a certain high status, you need to have the, 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 the you know, the, the, the vagabond clothing, you know, the good-looking clothing to be something. But in the eyes of Al Bashi and Al Shai, they are the spies as nothing because they have received their consolation. You know, the, the kingdom of heaven is for the meek upon the earth. You know, those, those that are basically you know, mourning for the state of this world, you know, are, are, are in a poor state. You know, and you know, eventually they look at us. But we're going to be of course. We're going to be those people. They had sometimes in derision going to be beamed up and eventually we're going to be you know kings and priests you know on the earth they're going to be under our rulership you know it's going to be a beautiful thing to see to behold you know all the females going to be in the right state of mind you know no more wickedness you know yeah, that's that's the that, uh, penny man that uh, we all are working uh, towards you know that penny that some uh, laborers came in at the at the third hour, eleventh hour, you know, ninth hour. But then the penny is going to be the salvation. But you're going to have a, a ranking system also because the ones that labored uh, the most, the ones that ministered onto, uh, onto the onto Israel the most, they are going to be as the brightness of the stars. They're going to shine as the firmament. You know, that's also written in the scripture. So all these things that we explain to you are not of ourselves. These things are the words of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, and it's a sure word. Yeah. So it's gonna it's gonna come to pass, man. And that's how uh, the men of the Lord we are being boosted up in the spirit when we see these things happening, when we see that uh, wars and rumors of wars, when we see that the the word is being spread into different countries and different tongues and different languages. You know, it's the words of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai that are gonna come that are coming to pass. Because it um, says in was it the book of uh, Luke that how that many wanted to see what you see, you know, but uh, they they now they sleep in the dust because they thought as soon as they see Yahweh Shai come back or yeah when he was when he was there they're like okay is now the kingdom gonna come because we want the kingdom to come man we can't wait but. We have to have that patience. So in that time when Yahweh Shai was here, the, 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 the disciples were like, okay, so it's now the time that you're going to restore the kingdom. Nope. Then he, he died, he, he was crucified, and after three days he came back. Okay, so now the kingdom is going to come, right? Mm. Nope. So we still got to wait. We got to uh, uh, understand what is going to happen and take it with patience, and then the kingdom is going to come. Because the, the, the disciples in that time, they didn't have the full understanding. When when Yahweh Shai left, that's when the Comforter came, and that's when the understanding was revealed unto them. That's when Yahweh Shai breathed upon them, and then they started to understand what uh, what has to come to pass. I have a scripture for you. This is Matthew chapter 13, verse 17. For verily I say unto you that many prophets and righteous men have desired to see those things which ye see have not seen them, and to hear those things which you hear, and have not heard them. And that's speaking about these times, because the prophets and the kings, they wanted to see these things, they were waiting upon it, but they didn't see it in their lifetime. But through the regeneration, then they are back in the flesh, and they can see these things, and Yahweh Tazah, that we may see the coming of our Lord, the you know, that's, that's what the... Uh, as a man of the Lord, you should always pray for that also. That's a, a tip that I can give you. That's one of uh, the things I always pray for, you know, to see the coming of our Lord Yahweh Shai. Because He is our Lord. He is our King and Savior. He's, gonna, he's your everything. You know, as the book of uh, Second Corinthians says, you know, the, the, the order that you have the woman, then you have, uh, as the head of the woman, you have the man, and as the head of uh, the man, you have Yahweh Shai. So He is our Lord and Savior, and He's going to uh, not meet these people as a man. He's going to meet meet these people as an angelic being, as a, as a celestial being. And then uh, the head of Yahweh Shai is Yahweh. So pray to see the coming of uh, Yahweh Shai. Can I add an uncle? 
because what are the things that we're seeing right now that the profits, you know, before time have not seen? You know, we're seeing that the market, the base is being rolled. Yeah, being rolled. Well, like, am I saying the wrong word? Sorry, the, the next thing, but uh, we're seeing that the, that the market, the base is being, you know, basically rolled out. You know, we're seeing all these wars, rumors of wars taking place. And, you know, in the book of uh, Second Astra, we were being taught, measured out of time diligently in itself. And when I see as part of the science, you know, that I've told you before, then shall I know that it's the same time and the highest shall begin to visit the world which he made. And how do you measure the times? Through the, through the, the Bible. Because the, the Bible is the rod. Uh, I believe it's in uh, Psalms 2. That rod goes into the rod. Psalms 23, let me let me bring this up first. Uh, let me see. Yeah, that rock confidence. That one my head. Yeah. This is uh, Psalms 23, verse 4. Yay! Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, which speaks about uh, America, mm -hmm. you know, you, you have a valley, a valley is, a, is between two mountains, it's the deepest part, and where is the so-called um, blacks, Latinos, and Native Americans in their, in their deepest and lowest estate? That's in America, so that's the valley of the shadow of death, because you, death is lurking around the corner, as it says in uh, Deuteronomy, uh, where it speaks about that you shall have a trembling heart. I will fear no evil, which is uh, evil is, is uh, a bad time, for thou art with me, thou is speaking about the hour. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me, and uh, a rod and a staff is a, a measuring instrument. And so that's why when, we, when it says uh, measure thou the time diligently, it speaks about measuring the times with the, with the Bible, with the scriptures. You, you know what is supposed to happen, and then when you see it happen, you're like, oh, oh, it's that time. Okay. So we're living in that time right now. Yeah. And uh, basically, uh, you know, filtering the events of the world, like the brother said, through the scriptures. And you know, you just, eh, you just, you know, took the words out of my mouth. Man. So oh, that, was, yeah. that, that was the only thing that I could add on to what you said, man. Oh, so so, like, yeah. No, no, it's, it's good, it's good, it's good, it's good. Let me see, uh, where are we going into? Uh, well, we went into salvation. Yeah, you can, you can things, also uh, go to the book of Habakkuk 3, where it speaks about the chariots of salvation. You know, that's, that's that strange act, but that shows you that the chariots are our salvation. It's good. And uh, Revelations uh, 1 and 7. There's always a chip that's hiding herself. After Jewel? Or after Kodidaya? Maybe it's after Micah. Yes, after Micah. Yes, after Micah. After Micah, I believe. After Nathan. <laughs> yeah, after Micah, I believe. Sure, you can't, can't, can't. Because if you go into that word Habakkuk, in the, the first chapter, Habakkuk, he was ex. Um, he was. Uh, how do you say that? I just had it. Yeah, complaining. So he was he was complaining to the Most High that you know, uh, yeah. Start read that. Uh, Habakkuk one till four because Hab Habakkuk means to embrace. And uh, if you go to that word embrace, you have to embrace what is happening around you. You have to embrace that uh, the prophecies have to come to pass in a certain order. So the, you, you can't hasten above the the maker. You can't hasten above um, above the Most High. Of course, you want the kingdom to come, and we, we hasten the time. But still, you gotta sit sit uh, sit out this. Um, how do you call it? Timeout. That's yeah. how, how Esau calls it. You got a timeout, so we, we gotta we gotta sit this one out. It's the second Esther chapter four verse thirty seven. By measure hath he measured the times, and by number hath he numbered the times. He doth not move nor stir them until the set measure be fulfilled. So it's uh, the most high that measures the times. Because if you go 
the, the most high he, he works with a, with, a, with a balance so when the time is, is uh, met then he comes with his repercussions then he comes with his, his judgments you know he always measures the time measures the time and it's up to him to to come with the, the prophecies you know this is Habakkuk chapter 3 verse 1 a prayer of Habakkuk the prophet on a three, uh, eight. Just to show that he was uh, complaining for, for everything that's happening around him. And after that, he wanted to go to the tree. This is Habakkuk chapter 1, verse 1. The burden which Habakkuk the prophet did see. O Lord Jehovah, how long shall I cry and thou would not hear? Even cry unto thee of violence and thou would not save. Why dost thou show me iniquity and cause me to behold grievance? For spoiling and violence are before me, and there are that raise up strife and contention. Therefore the law is slack and judgment that never go forth, for the wicked doth compass about the righteous, therefore her judgment proceedeth. God, so he was uh, complaining to the Most High that, you know, why, why are you not listening to my cry? Why are the wicked uh, ruling over us? Why is the, the law uh, slack? You know, and... Um, also says in the book of uh, Ecclesiastes that um, because judgment doesn't proceed um, quick, that's why it's uh, set in the heart of man to do wickedness. You know, so you, you don't see uh, action reaction immediately with uh, the Most High. You know, it's according to His measure, as uh, the brother just read. When He finds it fit, then He comes with uh, the judgments. to the point in the chariots of salvation. Verse 4? Verse 8. Come on, come on. This is Habakkuk chapter 3 verse 8. Was the Lord Jehovah displeased against the rivers? Was that anger against the rivers? Was that wrath against the sea? Did thou didst ride upon thine horse and thy chariots of salvation? God. So showing you that the, the UFOs, the so-called unidentified flying objects, those are the, the chariots of the Most High. Those are the chariots of the self, of salvation. When he, when those uh, chariots come, then everything is gonna be moving and shaking and trembling. Mm. That's why uh, Habakkuk says, uh, "Was thou displeased with the rivers?" Because when a chariot comes, when you see a jet. Uh, fly low what happens to the river you know it, it lifts up its, its arms and that's what's uh, explained also in let me see if you read further then it speaks about how yeah let's uh, have a good uh, test straight to the point or onto ten uh, gone this is happy cook three and ten the mountains saw thee and they trembled god this is like uh, in the time of moses you know, when uh, Yahweh Bashem Yahushai came to a chariot to speak unto Moses, the whole mountain trembled and shaked. The people were like, what's happening over there? You know, they hear thunders, they, all the elements were shaking. Mm -hmm. And they trembled. The overflowing of the waters passed by. Deep uttered his voice, lift up his hands on high. Yeah, so you can, you can imagine. That's why it's beautiful when you listen to these uh, scriptures. Then it it's just beautiful. The the deep utterance his voice when you see the deepness of the the river. It's like when Moses uh, walked with the, the the people out of the uh, out of Red sea. yeah the Red Sea out of Egypt. Then you saw the the deepness of the river and the the river lifted up his hands. You know, so you can imagine that, and that's why when it, when it speaks about certain things, then you can. It, it, it brings it to life, you know. In the same way, like uh, how I was explaining, with uh, if a jet passes uh, on the surface of a wa for a water, then you see that the, the water lifts up its it hands. That's how uh, the, the prophet Habakkuk was uh, explaining this. Let's let's go to prophet. <laughs> we started with uh, wisdom. Where the where the where it was harder? Yeah. Still the precept of everybody. Okay, we should bring it up. So this is uh, Proverbs chapter one verse twenty. Wisdom cried without, she uttered her voice in the streets. 
She cried in chief place of concourse in the openings of the gates in the city. She uttered her words, saying, God, so this is the, the, the opening of the gates because this is the, the chief place of concourse. This is where people do, do business. This is where uh, people have their businesses. And this is the gate there too. This is where people enter into that, that uh, area. Because this is where uh, the train stops and this kind of like gate. Because back in the day, the, the gate, yeah, what did it represent? You have, the, you have a, a strong tower, you have the, the kingdom, but then you have the gate to the, the kingdom. And that's where the, the, the prophets, they were standing. You know, they were standing in the gates. Yeah, this Isaiah chapter 30, first, uh, starting off at verse, uh, verse 20. And though the Lord Yahweh gives you the bread of adversity and the water of affliction, yet shall not thy teachers be removed into a corner anymore, but thine eyes shall see thy teachers. God, thy eyes shall see thy teachers. Meaning the men of the Lord, they're going to stand in the highways and byways to explain the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of the Most High unto you. You know, you shall hear a word, this is the way, walk ye in it. I believe it's, it's the same word. Yes, verse 21. And then heirs <laughs> shall hear a word behind thee, saying, This is the way, walk ye in it, when you turn to the right hand, and when you turn to the left. <laughs> so that's the way of the, the Most High that's, that's calling you, but you, you don't want to listen. And this was going to happen. It's a proper <laughs> Verse 22, uh, Proverbs chapter 1, verse 22. How long, ye simple ones, will ye love simplicity? God, and that's uh, with, our, with our nation, man. They love simplicity. They love, um, what is it? Ecclesiastes 10. Uh, folly is set in great dignity. They love folly. That's what they love. They want to. They do? Okay, God, God, God. No other. Yeah, man. So they love simplicity. They love folly. That's it. If you look at TikTok, if you look at uh, Instagram, uh, all those things, they love simplicity. They, they love um, yeah, things of this world. Yeah, things of this mm -hmm. world. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> and the scorners delight in their scorning, and fools hate knowledge. God, they hate knowledge because we utter knowledge unto them, but they, they come and um, contend with us. Contend. They, they want to fight us because we, we tell them certain things. We tell them. Uh, to the scriptures because they their life and their race are set in this world so they want to fight what they believe in they believe in this world they believe in Egypt they believe in Esau so that's why they're going to be burnt up with uh, Esau with these ICBM missiles they can no wicked thing shall uh, come into the kingdom no wicked thing on, or defiled thing shall inherit the kingdom you know? yeah man I think we can uh, close it up yeah. with that. Chapter 13, verse 28. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth when ye shall see Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and all the prophets in the kingdom of the Most High and ye yourselves thrust out. God. So that's what's going to happen to these people. When they see the kingdom of heaven is going to come, you know, they are going to be thrust out because they are not going to inherit the kingdom in that life. They are going to come through the seat of the, of the elect of the men. You know, so that's kind of the, the, the theme. Is that that's been the theme this 
uh, today, the kingdom, you know, that penny that we are all working towards, you know. So, Yahara Tazar, this was edifying, and we want to say all praises, honor, and glory go on to Yahawa, Basham, Yahushai, Basham Rakakadash, Basham Rakakadash, double honors to the elders and apostles of great Bilsons for teaching us his truth and who rule well, peace and citations unto the Akim that is spread around the four corners of the earth, spreading this word in Syria and in truth. Shalom. 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 Shalom.